All right, hello everyone. So today I have a fun chart for you guys. This is the chart of the Georgia Guidestones, the moment that they exploded. And I'm gonna talk a lot about Ardra Nakshatra and Rudra. And so it's just lovely because the rains just came, right? As I was sort of talking about it, warming up. And then it's like I invoked Rudra and Ardra. You know, Ardra is the star of the teardrop and it has a lot to do with cleansing storms. Rudra is the god of storms, the storm god. Um, of course, there's a few other nakshatras that have a lot to do with rain as well. Um, but yeah, let's go right into this. So just so you guys know a little bit of background, the Georgia Guidestones are considered to be like America's Stonehenge, although really America's Stonehenge is Coral Castle. Go spend some time researching that if you don't know about that. But um, they're really totally BS. They're they're not Stonehenge. They're, they were just made um, by some guy, as the story goes, R.C. Christian. Uh, some guy commissioned these and had them made. It's pretty obvious that it was some member of the Rosicrucian order, you know, like R.C. Christian, the founder of the Rosicrucians was Christian Rosencruz. Um, and it's and we feel that way. A lot of us feel that way because the Rosicrucians are intertwined with the Freemasons and all these elite groups that are trying to that have an open agenda of depopulating the planet. You know, um, and so on these guide stones, they claim to be a guide to an age of reason. And they say a bunch of like good logical points. But the first main point is maintain the population under 500 million. And that's just absurd. Like that is so dumb. And that is just really, 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 really dumb. And now I know a lot of you guys think that a lot of you younger kids that have grown up in universities with curriculums funded by governments, you know, your state funded curriculums that your supposed wise universities have taught you is that, oh yeah, we're overpopulated. And, you know, the, the popula overpopulation is the biggest problem and we should never have babies. And, you know, if you, you shouldn't even have more than one kid and blah, 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 bullshit. I'm here to tell you that's all nonsense. And that actually looking at the scientific literature, we're facing the biggest threat is running out of people, is running out of babies, actually. And because the reason is, and it's not a friendly fact to know, but the facts of the matter is, is that as we become more urbanized and we move more into cities and more and more cities get developed, once you get a city, the population, everyone starts getting educated. And then the women who would normally be bearing children, about half of them stop doing that because they're getting educated and getting jobs. And so the population starts dropping by half and then another half, the next generation. And before you know it, your population is dramatically dwindling. And there's also a lot of other reasons why living in cities leads to infertility and just other issues. Cities just aren't that, that cities aren't that good for us. <laughs> P.S. Just so you know. Um, and so, uh, so this is kind of the thing is that uh, the Georgia Guidestones are like this, are basically considered to be a symbol of the new world order. And yeah, it's complete nonsense that overpopulation is the biggest threat to the planet. Right now, we might have the most people on the planet that we're ever going to have. And um, yeah, it's kind of a real mystery, real, real twist the way they twist that information. Um, and, you know, we can just we have the technology now so we don't have to destroy the environment to feed all the people. We actually produce more than enough calories to feed the entire planet, just so you know, it's another important fact. Um, it's the government, the distribution, the control of all this food and energy. That's the problem. Um, and so, yeah, I, you know, a lot of people wondered, was this like a natural, a natural disaster, but then footage was released. It was an explosion. It's interesting because I might have thought that it was like lightning striking it or a natural event if, say, like, K2 was on the Ascendant with Vishaka, I would think like, oh, it's an act of God, maybe. But we see with the Ascendant, the Ascendant is the event, the person initiating the event, the initiating party. So the person who caused this is Gemini. And Gemini is a biped sign. So yeah, we know it's a human. It's like the most human sign. And it has Venus on the Ascendant, which is also a Brahmin or a biped or a humanistic planet. Whereas like, say, Mars is a quadruped. Um, rules the quadruped forms so it might say like an elephant knocked it down but no venus and gemini it's definitely saying a human did this and what's hilarious is the ruling planet mercury goes to cancer so starved by the moon so starved with with by emotion some sort of you know um there was a lot of emotion behind why this person did that 
And then what's hilarious is the moon goes to Libra, which is a sign of the world and politics and uh, justice, you know? And so this person was, I think that's a hint that this person was trying to take a stab at the new world order and send a message to them, whether it was organized as a group thing or just one person, I don't know, but well, probably is, was a pair since it's a sign of a pair. So it probably was two people involved, but yeah, it's really interesting because of that factor. And then the more important factor is Mercury is in Cancer, but it's in Ardra, the star ruled by Shiva, the god of destruction. And it's with the sun. Sun is agitating Mercury, this person. The sun, when the sun agitates you, it means authorities, government, people that you're supposed to respect are belittling you or stressing you out and agitating you. So it's, again, showing frustration with the government and politics and with higher authorities, frustrating frustration with the king, you know. And um, it's and then Mercury is applying or is just about to leave in an aspect from Mars. So Mercury just applied to Mars. And that's the amazing thing about progeny and mundane events, as you can see by the aspects, what just happened, what's about to happen, you know. So we see that, yeah. This person is separating from a Mars event. They're doing a Mars thing. You know, that's what's going on is Mercury is that's its tightest aspect is a Mars event. It's an explosion. Um, how fascinating that uh, Mars is in an Earth sign, Taurus, and that they're in a secretly friendly aspect. The 11th Lord is in the 12th, speaking to loss. 12th Lord is in the first. This is an event of a loss. This is a chart of an event of, some, of something being lost, something being resolved. Um, concluded like the 12th house and uh a violent thing an explosive thing because of that mars aspect and because of mercury being in uh what's what's it called for um it's called harsh hard and harsh tikshna and daruna that's the quality of this nakshatra and then also factor in uh rashi aspects mercury is literally rashi aspecting with only malefics and every malefic it's with sun mars rahu saturn ketu all rashi aspecting that mercury so it's about as malefic as it can get um but it's also fascinating that jupiter is in the 11th so jupiter is jiva one of his names is jiva which means life so 11th house is the house the place of gain so it's saying that life is gaining from this destruction. So I think this really was a good omen for the world that this got destroyed because it's saying this plan, whoever had this plan of reducing the population down to under 500 million, um, it's going to be, it's done. You know what I mean? Jiva, Jupiter is not blessing it. And it's Jiva, life, you know, like life is going to succeed. And um, the sixth Lord is in the, well, I don't want to go into that, but that that shows kind of like the hidden secret and enmity going on too, the sixth lord in the twelfth. Um, but uh, and then what was the other thing that I wanted to say? Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it was like right after Fourth of July, so it seems like someone got kind of patriotic and wanted to send a message. Mercury is messages to the globalists. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, the other. Yeah, so the, the porn it the solo with Mars is the more like technical thing that really seems like it's making it happen. But there's a really good nakshatra example as well, I feel, because the Lagna Lord, again, the moon's nakshatra is Hasta. It's not that, in this case, it's not that significant, but the nakshatra of the Lagnesh, like I'm teaching in this nakshatra course, is that the nakshatra of the Lagnesh is really, really important. And that's Ardra Rudra. So this whole chart has like a Shiva energy to it. And Shiva, like, you guys, Ardra is the star of calling out the violators. It's literally the star of saying, screw you to the globalists. Ardra and Mula as well. These are both, Mula is ruled by, or sorry, Ardra is ruled by Rudra, Shiva. Mula is the, ruled by the deity of Rudrani, or Kali, or Shiva's wife. And these are both the stars of, you know, finding stars are very important with, like, whistleblowers, um, people that protect the world, people that call out the violators. Um, I'm going to give a lot of examples of that. And it's also a tremendously spiritual uh, star because the final thing, the final violating thing is the ego. You know what I mean? The final thing that has to be uprooted. Um, 
and it's it's really it truly is one of the most spiritual stars and most unworldly stars and this is because we're going to go into more uh on the other in the other classes on ardra and Mergashira. but basically rohini is ruled by brahma brahma creates the world you know he's the forefather of everything so he has to create his own wife so his own wife is his own daughter in a sense right because there's nothing that existed before him so then he creates his own wife, Vak or Saraswati. And then he's like, yo, we have to have a kid. I'm sorry, but this is the only way to do it. You know what I mean? And she runs from him and flees that. And she becomes a deer or she becomes all these animals to run from him and goes through the many worlds. And Brahma, the creator, keeps chasing her through the worlds. And so she becomes a deer and runs from him as a deer. And then Brahma becomes a deer and is searching and hunting him out, hunting her out. And that's Mrigashira, the head of the deer. Um, and right before Brahma is about to violate Saraswati, Shiva or Rudra steps in and shoots, takes his head off with his bow and arrow, decapitates him, grabs his deer head and throws it up into the sky, creating Orion's belt or the head of the head of the deer. Um, Mrigashira literally means the head of the deer. And so uh, Brahma and Rohini has this great stigma of violators or sexual violating you know what i mean and brahma is literally called mrigayu which means the violator um mrigashira is kind of a star also of searching and going and going to great extent to get that soma to get that worldly juice that worldly nectar so mrigashira is one of the most worldly stars and mrigashira is very mrigashira and uh rohini are very very big with these globalists like when you look at the charts of these people You'll see a lot of these violators, a lot of these people who are doing horrible things to nature to get their soma, to get their desires fulfilled, are have these stars very prominent. And, you know, um, the soma, being obsessed with the soma, the elixir of immortality and all these things. I don't want to spend too much time on that because it really gets into stuff I can't even talk about on YouTube, but you can watch the next chapter course. Um, but Ardra is where that Ardra is the breaking of that. So Mrigashira is like the most worldly star and is looking for the worldly immortality. Spirit like Rudra and Ardra is looking for the spiritual immortality, the spiritual soma and cuts off that, the head of that ego and cuts that off. So that's why Ardra is this destructive storm, this cleansing storm. Like there's literally all this rain happening right now to cleanse away all that, um, the sin of all that sexual lust and everything, you know? So Ardra is really all about calling out the violators. Um, Ardra or Rudra, you know, one of his old names was Pashupati, literally the protector of the born, the protector of the, the animals, the little furry creatures. He's the one that protects them against hunters, you know? And so that's why literally the, the nakshatra, um, the sutra of, of it in the Taitriya Brahmana is the two arms of Rudra are uh, deer and grain or mrigayava that can also just mean hunters hunters from above and caustic from below there's a number of ways you can tr translate this sutra but one way of translating it is the two arms of Rudra needs hunters so he can destroy them and make them into just nothing and caustic you know just just <laughs> crush them up um so yeah so that's pretty wild and that's literally what this person did he took the hunters the violators and crushed and you know crushed their symbol their their uh their pride in their little symbol. So interesting example of mundane astrology and of nakshatras and Arjuna nakshatra. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed.